Hello. Hey. Welcome to church. This is Megan. Hey, this is Phil. And we are in the pre-show. And I was just thinking about the pre-show, what it means if there was a pre-show at physical church. Yes. We are like the people at the front making you do stretches. Yeah, we're doing the Zumba. Yeah. Getting you going. And everyone's like, Ugh. Phil will be leading that, guys, if it happens. I know so many of those moves. <laughs> I don't know any. Uh, so we're here to get you ready, excited for church, to get you chatting. And one of the ways in which we do that is ask you a question. And we want to ask you about this season in your life, what's happening in this season of, of your life? Quite a general question, general, but yeah, I think something we can uh, easily all relate to, yes, right? Yes, there's always something going on, isn't there? Yeah. Why something? So we want you to share about what's happening in your life now, right now, any stories, anything that's happening, and we're going to talk, and we just yes. want to encourage you to interact. No, don't be too scared to put it in. I'm sure someone will, like, reply to you. Yes. Um, and relate to you in some sort of way. 100%. Know? What's going on in your life um, right now, life. this season? I started Academy Guys um, a couple of weeks ago, which is exciting. I'm loving it. It's very exciting. It's a bit of me. Um, I really like academic stuff, so I like writing notes and stuff like that, so I'm excited about that. And I'm kind of just in my like getting deeper kind of phase of faith, and I'm, yeah, really enjoying it. That's good. Yeah. You are very much um, someone who would love academics, generally. I love academics. With God and... Always. Yeah, I'm having a secular music class at the moment, which is fun. That's good, that's... It's so fun. Helping you... It's, hel it's really helping. Go deeper as well, Definitely. isn't it? It's more time. Like, that's yeah, great. So what about you, Phil? Right now, my whole focus in my life is GLS. Everything yeah. is like, ah! It, it is... <laughs> this is your season. Yeah, two, season. two weeks away. And the staff have GLS soon. And we're really gearing up. It's a big thing okay. for church. Yeah, definitely look at it, guys. Definitely sign up. There are some of you who are signed up for the online option. Do you consider coming in person as Love well? Are you coming? I'm up? coming. So, of course I'm coming. Your first GLS. Yes, I'm ready. It's the day before my birthday, so I'm like... Oh, we've got to remember that. Note, write that down, <laughs> someone. Write it down, guys. Someone's, at least one person. Danielle will. Danielle will know what your birthday is anyway. I feel like Danielle gets quite a lot of shout, shout outs. She does. On, on the show. We absolutely love Danielle. You'll see her in the comments at the 7.30 probably <laughs> service. Yeah. Saying hello. Yeah. But yeah, that's very much me. I can't Sorry. wait for it to arrive uh, because then I can relax slightly. We all love a bit you of know, relaxation. You know when, you, when things are like really like, it's the build just, up, and then you're like, oh, yeah, I can relax. I now. just need to. You know. So you're excited about the relaxing season after, as well. I mean, I yes, but also <laughs> GLS. Also GLS. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure real. it'll be life changing for you because it is. Um, yeah, it is life changing. I'm really excited. I'm very excited. So today is week three of our treasure principle and. It was touch and go, actually. Angie might have been ill this week, and she might not be feeling well today, but she is going to be preaching today. She is. Yeah, she is. She is. That yes. is exciting. I say she is. I she hope is. she is. Guys, don't come at us if she's not, okay? Like, <laughs> I, I like is. suddenly someone's expecting They're Angie. They're like, we get the keyboard warriors. <laughs> yeah, it's not Angie. <laughs> well, we, we hope it's Angie. And she'll be continuing our yeah. Treasure Principle series, we which really looks at how we can invest in our future. Yes. Mm. And um, I think that's a good thing. Yeah. 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 Now, would you like to pray for us? <laughs> you can pray this time. Me? Yeah. I do like praying. <laughs> Let's pray. Jesus, we are here for you. We want to focus on you. We are here to give you, give you our time and mm -hmm. energy. Whatever we are thinking or carrying as we enter into this time, may we give it to you. Uh, from our heart, lift it from our shoulders because we want to hear directly from you. We want to uh, be touched with the Holy Spirit by you. We offer this time and importantly, we give you permission to move in our mind and hearts. But may there be something today, whatever it is and wherever it is in this service that will speak directly to our hearts and we can come away being like, God said this for this reason. Those are the best times in which uh, we connect with you and at church. So may that happen to us today. Thank you so much for this time together and uh, we give you praise ultimately because this, this is all about you, Jesus. In your mighty, holy name. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Have a great Sunday. C3 to everybody online in the room. Come on, we're going to lift up in the name of Jesus. Let's get Let's sing it out again. Sometimes you can dance through the darkness, see through the fire, pray so it don't make sense. Sometimes you got to stay. You gotta shout from the mountains, loud in the valley. Drugs seem like it's going to get you there. Sometimes you gotta work from the wonder, wait for the answer. Worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anyway.
all for your glory. Everything we do, every sound we make, Lord, every song we sing is for your glory. Come and have your way in this church this morning. Touch every heart, Lord. Father, we know that you're the name above all names. You're the king of all kings. Father, you're the great I am. Come and do what only you can do, Lord.
As we bring our offering, you meet us face to face. We are your dwelling place, now purified by grace. Till heaven and earth are one, let your kingdom come. Now let your kingdom come. Revelation 21, it says, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people. He will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things have passed away. And that's talking about an eternity that we're going to. But church, we do not live just to go to eternity. We exist to bring something of heaven to earth. Let his kingdom come. And so right now we're going to pray. And we're going to pray with people that have faith. Like we've just sung, the work complete on Calvary. The work complete on Calvary. There is no question that Jesus already paid the price so that we get to be in the presence of the Most High today. And we approach it with reverence. But Jesus, thank you that we even get to be in your presence. So we're going to pray for some of these things. There's a lot about healing on here. So lift up your hands if you're in need or if you want to look at one of these and pray for one of these. But Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, God, that the work is complete by the price that was paid, Lord God, that we can stand here as people of faith, God. Whether it feels like we've come in with a mustard seed of faith or we feel fired up in a season full of faith, God, I thank you that you are a God of the miraculous, that you are a God, Lord God, that take us ordinary, broken people and somehow, God, you dwell within us. And so I pray for bodies that are in need of healing right now, God. God, we thank Thank you, Jesus, that one touch from you can change everything. We thank you for the testimonies that we have heard, God, of how you have touched lives, how doctors' reports have been turned around. Lord, I pray for breakthrough of anyone in the need of healing today. Lord Jesus, God, I pray even right now, God, as we want to be your dwelling place where there is things we need to um, forgive ourselves off right now, God, and, and say to you, Lord, thank you for your grace that extends, God. We lay down some stuff. God, I thank you where there is unity, you command blessing. And God, I thank you for this church family, Lord. I pray for every single need. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch lives. God, we will give all the glory as we've sung. It's all for your glory, King Jesus, all for your glory. And God, I do pray even for tonight as we record some of these songs as an album recording, God, it would be so much more than that. Jesus, I pray it'd be a night of encountering you, of salvation, God, of breakthrough, Jesus, as, as we record these songs, that they would go far and wide and they would touch people's lives who are yet to know you, Lord God. I thank you that we get to be in the business of what you are doing. Your kingdom come, Lord. Help us to pray what your heart is for this world, Lord God. Help us, King Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 The work complete on Calvary. I like that lyric. Good lyric. Who wrote that song? Byron. Great lyric, Byron. Great lyric. Okay, why don't you uh, say hi to someone as you take your, your seats right now. My name's Katie, if we've not met. Welcome if it's your first time here today. If you're a student, you're especially welcome. I know we've got lots of new students around at the moment. Hi, youth, you good? Right now, we are going to continue in our worship. We're going to receive an offering. So ways to give are on the screen, but our Connect team are also around. If you would like to take an envelope away with you with ways to give on there. We have a student lunch today. So if you are new to Cambridge, We've got a lunch after our 11.30 service. We would love to connect with you. So come along, free lunch. We would love to see you there. But right now we're going to have a look at what else is going on in the life of the church. So take a look at the screen. Welcome to Life at C3. 
Here's what's happening in our church. Our heart is to make sure that our C3 family is directed to events, ministries, and community updates. My name is James Hewitt. I'm a human performance scientist with a deep interest in how leaders' well-being significantly impacts both their personal performance and the performance of their teams. For example, recent research suggests that leaders can influence their team members' mental health as much as their spouses, and even more than doctors or therapists. It's a powerful responsibility. I'm really excited to be speaking live on this topic and more at the Global Leadership Summit in Cambridge on October 10th, 2024. You can register for this event, which will be held both in person and online by visiting globalleadership.uk. And if you're part of the C3 family, you get to use your promo code. I'm a big fan of the Global Leadership Network because they consistently provide world-class resources that equip and inspire leaders to make a real difference. Investing in your leadership isn't just about your personal growth, it's about creating a lasting impact for those you lead and beyond. Our live worship recording is happening tonight at the 5.30 service in Cambridge. We can't wait to record the sound of worship from our church with you. Make sure you're there ready to sing. Hey C3 family, we have coming up very soon our final vision offering for 2024. In a few moments, you're going to hear from a number of the team who are going to share where we sense God has guided us where to invest this in this next season. Take a listen to this. Hey church, you might be wondering, where are you and why are you stood by the side of a road? Well, I am stood in the middle of the roundabout outside the C3 Centre in Cambridge and as I speak to you, I am looking in a westerly direction. We have held for some time a prophetic word that one day we have become a church of 10 locations. Right now we are four. In addition to that, we have our microsite in Fordham and our ongoing ministry into the prisons. And as we come up to Vision Offering, we have decided as a leadership team that we are going to commit a significant proportion of this Vision Offering towards building a fund to launch our fifth location. We believe that that is going to help us to continue with our mission to reach and shape a generation with the message and cause of Christ. We believe that launching new locations is one of the best ways that we can fulfill that mission. And I'm stirred here because we also believe that we should expand in every direction from the centre here in Cambridge. And so as I look to you, I am looking westward because for the last several years we have sensed that when we launch our next location, we should look towards the west. Could that be a Cambridge West location? Could it be Bedford? Could it be Peterborough or somewhere else? Maybe even as I'm speaking to you, God is stirring something in your heart. Well, then I'd love for you to drop us a note by emailing us at hello at the c3.uk. And why don't we pray and why don't we get ready to give and see God's kingdom expand through this vision offering. We'd love to pray with you right now and pray together for us as people that we will hear God's heart for what he wants us to bring, what he wants us to give. I love these verses from 1 Chronicles when David was gathering the goods for the uh, building of the temple. It says here in 1 Chronicles 29, Lord our God, all this abundance that we've provided for building your temple in your holy name comes from your hand and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. All these things I've given willingly and with honest intent. And now I've seen with joy how willingly your people are here that they have given to you. Lord, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Israel, keep these desires and thoughts in the hearts of your people forever and keep their hearts loyal to you. That is our prayer, that as we gather together all the resources that God has given to us, we give them back to him so that we build something that is a testimony to his name, a witness for his glory here on the earth. We'll be praying that God speaks to each and every one of us what he wants us to bring. We're deeply grateful for our partnership in this kingdom endeavour. Do pray what you should give as a member of the C3 family, October 6th, Vision Offering 2024.
To stay up to date with everything happening at the C3 Church, follow us on social media and sign up to our Life at C3 emails for more details. GLS is coming up October 10th. We have James Hewitt, who you heard from on the screen. He's going to be sharing live his very own C3 family. And we also have this year live Ken Costa. Costa. Ken Costa. And he is going to be talking about um, this trillion dollar wealth transfer that's going to take place generationally, what that means for society and the church. And I'd encourage you today, if you have not yet booked in, you can do so by going to globalleadership.uk and use that C Free Family discount or go to next steps. Global Leadership has helped me not only as a leader, but as a mum, as a. Um, someone who leads in a home, different areas. And so I'd encourage you, do not rule yourself out. It is a significant event. And I know that we are going to grow and impact others as a result of the global leadership. So book in 10th of October. Is anyone in the room thinking about booking in but hasn't yet booked in? Rick Flynn, I'm going to buy you a ticket today after the service <laughs> to get you there. But anyone else, please do come along. It's always a real significant time. And the testimonies that come out of the Global Leadership Summit are incredible. And we get it the cheapest. There's people going to travel from all over the UK. But as C3 family, we get it the cheapest. So you can hold me to that. I'll buy you a ticket after the service. <laughs> but right now, we're going to continue with our Treasure Principle series. We have our senior pastor, Steve Campbell sharing. So have a look at the screen and then let's give a huge warm welcome to Pastor Steve. Well, welcome to everyone that's in the room here at Cambridge. Barry St. Edmunds, we love you. Colchester, we're supporting and loving you. Our Fordham microsite and online, of course, and all of you that are watching from over 70 prisons across the UK. Come on, can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> Makes a difference. We are on week three of the treasure principle. And the treasure principle is simply this. You can't take it, the it is your money, your treasures. You can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. Can you repeat that after me? You can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. And it's based on this scripture. This is Matthew, 19, Matthew 6, verse 19. Do not lay up your, your, for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is actually encouraging us to lay up treasure. He's not saying that we shouldn't lay up treasure the difference is to what we often think. He's saying, lay up treasure, not in this world, but in heaven. Randy Alcorn, who we base this series on, his book, The Treasure Principle, he says this, storing up earthly treasure isn't simply wrong, it's just plain stupid. Why? Because our earthly treasures will leave us. Whether they leave us in this life or when we die, they will leave us. And here is the best investment advice you will ever hear. Store up for yourselves treasure in heaven. In the first week when I shared, we saw how treasures in heaven includes power, ruling over cities, Luke 19, possessions, Matthew 19, 21, the rich young ruler, pleasures, Psalm 19, Psalm 16, verse 11, and people, the doctrine of rewards. And Jesus makes this promise. This is the words of Jesus. Jesus promises that those who sacrifice on earth will receive up to a hundred times as much 
in the new world. Listen to this. Matthew 19, verse 28. Okay, we use lots of Bible. Just check him. Matthew 19, 28 to 31. Jesus said, Truly I say to you, in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging 12 tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. For many who are first will be last and the last will be first. It's possible with how we use, treat, give our earthly treasure and how we invest it into the future, that there's a reward that's even a hundredfold according to Jesus. Don't worry if you feel you've given up anything for the kingdom. God is no man's debtor. Now, as I started preparing this message, I did something really stupid. I haven't done it very often, but I did it as I was preparing. I was a little bit rushed, and I went to my desk with a cup of tea. I put the cup of tea on the desk, and guess what I did? I knocked it over. Now, thankfully, it missed the laptop. But when I'm preparing, I have books all laid out in front of me. And the tea, like a tidal wave, started to move towards the books. It hit some. This is all happening in a second or two. It's just that the, the tea's going, and I, and I cried out in my office on my own, Oh, no, my books! And then he started to go towards my Bible. And I said, oh, no, not my Bible. And I got them, and quickly, you know, I'm doing this. And I heard the Holy Spirit distinctly say to me, what's your treasure? What's your treasure? And I knew what was coming as soon as I heard that. And I said, oh, no, not my books. And I've got to admit, I love books. This is Randy Alcorn's other book, if a bit more Deep Money, Possessions and Eternity, great book. They, they become friends to me. My favorite room in my house, it's a bit grandiose to call it this, but if you've ever been on a Zoom call with me, you'll see it, it is my library. In fact, the shelves that we had built by one of the C3 members here are so well put into the wall that the whole of the house could fall down and my bookshelves would stay there. It's solid as a rock. And I've got row upon row. And I, I love, I, I just love feeling. Is, is this a bit weird? I love feeling and sniffing books. Each book has a different smell. I love books. And I could see this tea going. I was on my Bible and I was shaking it and hearing the Holy Spirit say, what do you treasure? And I knew something I treasure is my books. You know why, partly why I treasure them, confession, is because it's part of my identity. I'm a, I'm a Bible teacher. I love to teach the Bible. And it's part of my identity, the books that I've got. Now, that might be wrong or right. We can discuss that another time, all right? Lots of us get value and identity for what we do and who we are. And I know... Part of this, I, I like having my library behind me on a Zoom call. I do. And I've had people say to me, you don't believe that one on the left, do you? I said, look, it doesn't say I believe them all. And I'm, my favorite row is my Bible row. And this is all going through my head in a few seconds. And I heard the Holy Spirit again say, what do you treasure? I said, yeah, Lord, I do treasure my books. And then he said, so give them away. No, I'm not going to give them all away. I'm going to start giving them away. Because I love them. It's a treasure. But I want to invest in eternity. And this is one of my, all my Bibles that I've got are all different versions. And they're not all new. In fact, one of them on there is a Schofield Reference Bible, which is really dodgy theology, by the way. But I bought it in a, in a bookshop with my dad in Wales. It only costs a pound, so the, it's worth a lot more to me. It's a treasure to me. No, it's not the monetary value. And I, the, some of these are marked, but I sense the Holy Spirit say, give them away. So, 
So goodbye, old friend. Mark, right at the back that I spoke to when I first came in, I'd love to give you the, would you mind coming forward? I'm sorry, I know this, you, you can come very often. Mark's a teacher in a local school. This is a gift for you. It's the New American Standard Version, the Ryrie Study Bible. I'm not saying everything in there is, is accurate or right, but I do know this. By, by, let, me, let me rephrase that. Everything is right in there except some of the study notes that go with it. They may not be, but everything else, there's, there's the inspired word of God. That's accurate and good. But the, some of the study notes that are from Ryrie may not be, but, but it's good to think about them. And I'd like to give that to you as a gift and say this. Let his word be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Now, I was thinking we got three services today. I'm going to have to give away three Bibles. And then I remembered... Oh, no, we've got a worship event tonight, so we're going to have to give away two. And I'm saying this, it's all my conversation, and then I felt the Lord say, well, what about Bury St. Edmunds and Colchester? When I come to you, I'm bringing you a gift, a book. Might be a Bible, might be something else. Fordham, there's a book that I'll bring to you when I come. Prisons, I'm not planning to come there, but if you write to us, then you can get a free Jeff Lucas book which he's given to us for outline notes and the same to you online write to the the C3, free post of the c3 church ask for jeff lucas's notes which we've got and we'll be giving them to you so i wanted to include everyone <laughs> i need to lie down now <laughs> what we're doing this treasure principle we've shared what is the treasure principle you can't take it with you, but you can send it in advance. And then there are different keys that go with that. The first key we looked at was this. God owns everything, and I am his money manager. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The fullness thereof, the old version says. Number two, we saw this last week with Pastor Rob Allen. My heart always goes where I put my money, where your treasure is. We read it earlier. There your heart will be also. Then we saw this, key number three to go with the principle. Heaven and the new earth, not this fallen one, is my home. We are citizens of heaven. We have a higher and first allegiance to the king of heaven. But today, I just want to go through two other keys in the time I've got left. This is the first one today. If I'm going to lay treasure in heaven... I should not live for the dot, but for the line. Look at this image. The dot is our life on earth. It begins, it ends, it's brief. But from the dot extends a line that goes on forever. For you and me, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you know you will live forever. We have a place in eternity in the new heaven and the new earth. We will live forever. This dot is ever so brief. Don't live for the dot. Live for the line. Now, when I say the word line, I'm a fisherman, fly fisherman. And I always think of this kind of line. This is braid, for those who are interested. Can I just have a, a volunteer, someone to come up here? Uh, uh, Ambo, Mon, come on. I want you just to take hold. So Anne is representing our lives, the dot. Here's dot. She's, represent, uh, she's, she's in the drama group, so this could all go wrong. <laughs> come, come in a little bit closer, Anne. I want you just to... Hold that, you're the dot. Oh, I thought it'd probably best to hold it that way. Hold the line. I'll hold that one. And I'm just going to pass this around. Lydia, catch that. Keep hold. Down. And what I want you to do while I'm speaking is I want you to pass this line along. Now, I'm not going to stay there the whole time, man, because you'd be a distraction. But thank you for being dot. Just pass it round. And every time, and I don't know how far this is going to go, 
Colchester, it's on his way to you. It's going to go all over the room. When you grab the line, just keep hold of the line. Let it go. Yeah, keep hold of it. I want you just to say this to yourself. I want to live for the line. I want to live for eternity. Physically feel it. Because we can't see the line. But this is the line. Where the dot. It's so short. Life is transitory. Quick. Keep passing it around. Passing it around. I hope it gets over to you on the left. If it doesn't, just imagine it in your fingers. So I want to say to you all today. Thank you, Ang. You can sit down now. Keep hold of the keep hold of it. You're the dot. And this is going to make a right mess. And I want this line back, actually. So uh, I want to use it while I'm fishing. Look at this. Don't, don't pull the microphone over. For those of you watching online, this is, could sadly go wrong. That line is eternity. When it comes into your hand, say to yourself, I want to live for the line. Right now, many of us are living in the dot. Well, I want to ask you, what are we living for? The short-sighted person lives for the dot. The person with perspective lives for the line. Now, my wife was supposed to be speaking today, but sadly, she's not well. She's at home watching online. Love you. But I stepped in, not total last minute, it was yesterday. So I've had a whole day to prepare this. And she wrote this in her notes. This is her story about her experience, first experience of death. So this is Angie. She says, I don't know much about you, but I don't like to talk about death very much. It seems so final and so sad. I remember the first time I had to face death. I was 10 years of age, and my Oma in Berlin, that's grandmother, Nana, my Oma in Berlin died. My mom has visited her recently because of her illness, and I distinctly remember my mom coming off the phone call. I remember because I was off school feeling ill with chicken pox or something like that, and she told me Oma had died. I got a little tearful and hid in my blanket, and she told me, don't cry. She's in heaven now. And I felt like it was wrong to cry and show my sadness. The first time something happens to you, especially in childhood, can affect you for the rest of your life. And as a consequence, I spent years holding back the tears. Nowadays, I can't take funerals because I cry too much. It's okay to feel sad. It's okay to grieve. We know the shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. He wept for Lazarus who died even though he knew he was soon going to resurrect him. Jesus can identify with you in your suffering. We mourn for our loss, but we don't grieve like those who have no hope, as the Bible states. For we live for a bigger purpose. I now know that the thought of seeing loved ones in heaven gives us hope. So I'm going to ask you, she writes, a question. And I want you to answer this week in three groups. When was the first time you encountered death, and how did it affect you? Don't live for the dot. Think of the line. Now, in answer to my wife's question, let me tell you the first time I experienced death, not in relation to someone close, or she was close to me dying, but in actually seeing I hope this doesn't freak any of you out, but it's going to happen to us all. Actually seeing a dead body and how it affected me. We had a friend in the church that we used to pastor in the Wirral called Meryl. Meryl was a beautiful woman in so many ways. She'd given her life to looking after her sister who had severe, severe additional needs, mental disabilities. And Meryl got seriously ill. And the church started to pray for a miracle, which is what we should always do because we serve a miracle working God. Did I hear an amen? God can always intervene. But it needed a miracle with the cancer that 
Merrill had. And I remember going into the hospital and visiting Merrill and how weak she was. But the church was praying. And one guy got up and prophesied in the church service. Les, his name was. She shall not die. And I'm leading this church. And I'm thinking, honestly, do you know what I thought when he pronounced she might not die? I thought she might. Well, I wanted to help them with the faith of the prayers, so we didn't say anything, prayed. And then one day I got a phone call. It was from the doctor who just certified Merrill's death. He happened to be a member of the church. And with the family's permission, he said to me, will you come in and pray for Merrill? I said, of course I will, but what am I going to pray? He said, pray for her resurrection. I said, well, yeah, I'll pray. So I went in, and I was going to pray for a resurrection. And let me say it in this way, Meryl's body was there. And this is, what, this is the, my first experience of ever seeing a dead body. I walked in, some of you might have experienced this. And immediately as I looked at that body, I knew this. Meryl is not there. She's not there. That's just the house. Now, let, let me be careful on that. I'll come back to this in a minute. That's just using biblical language. That's just the tent. Merrill is not there. Now, I did pray for resurrection. I, I prayed, and nothing happened. But I didn't come out of that hospital room feeling sad and dejected. I came out of that room thinking, she's not there. She's somewhere else. I was more convinced than ever in seeing a death body that this life ain't all there is. There's something else. I also experienced it when my dad died. He was in a hospice. And the work of the hospice was absolutely outstanding. Talk about ministry. You think this is ministry? That's ministry. And they were wonderful. And we were all around the bed. My dad was in the bed dying. My sister, my mom, my brother. Ange was with us. Brother-in-law was there. And my dad died. I remember kissing him and feeling the stubble on his face. <laughs> and I looked at him. And they got me to pray because I'm, I'm the holy man. <laughs> I'm not that holy. Well, I am because of the blood of Jesus, but you get me. Huh? Anyone could have prayed, but I prayed. Thank God for his life. Thank God for his legacy. We stayed there a while, and then we were able to leave the room. And as I look back, I look back, and I thought, he's not there, but he is somewhere. Because the essence of our life is not simply the body. Do not hear this as me saying the body isn't important because the body is very important. The body should be cared for and looked after. And don't hear me saying this, when we die, we're just spirit beings because we're not. We'll get a resurrection body and it will be physical and on a physical earth. And we have a physical Savior right now in heaven, a man in heaven called Jesus. We should thank God for that. So we're grateful. It's, it's not simply spiritual. But if you don't have a spirit in your tent, in your body, your body is simply a housing for the essence of our humanity, which is spirit. I look back at my dad, and I knew he wasn't there, but I knew he was somewhere. And I know, I, I just know. He said, well, how do I know? I, I can't explain it. It's not logical here. It is from the Word of God. But I know he's in paradise. And I know on the return of Jesus, he will be reunited with a resurrection body like the body of Jesus that will know no more suffering or pain. I know it. And then when we were in the side room, they asked us, did we want to go back? And if I remember rightly, and my sister's in the room, and my brother might be watching, they can correct me if I'm wrong. I decided not to go back in, as did my mom. I think my sister went back in, and my, and my brother, I think that's, that's fine. Do you know one reason I didn't want to go back in? Because I knew he wasn't there. I knew he was in paradise. Oh, life is so brief. What are you living for? 
hey, this is all a bit downbeat in here. Let, let's change the mood a little bit. Let's, I'm going to show you some holiday snaps, okay? Just to make things a little bit simpler, a little bit lighter. We went on holiday to Zagreb a few years ago, or to Croatia. We flew into Zagreb, we had a day or two there. And so we decided to go on one of these um, Segway tours. But my wife was really nervous about going on the Segway tour. The kids, whoever was there, I think it was just Becky and Megan. Were you there, Josh? I can't remember. Um, said, no, we want to go, Mom. We've got to go. So here's a picture on the screen of Ange and, and Becky ready to go on the Segway tour. So that just showing some holiday snaps. Okay, so we're going on, on, on the Segway tour, and the guide says to us, would you like to go to the local cemetery? <laughs> we said, yeah. He said, it's quite interesting. So he took us to the local cemetery, and it was quite interesting. But my wife, Angie, took a photo of one of the tombstones. Take a look at this. It's on the screen. I don't know whether you can see it, but obviously there's different people in there. And this monoslav at the end, it's got 1938, I think it is, dash 20. And there's no number there. They must have got an engraver on the tomb that was doing the job a lot. So he, he left off because she hadn't... If Mar Moroslav is a lady or a man, I don't know, Miroslav. They hadn't yet died. And when we looked at that, we thought, wow, what a way to think about life. It's a certain. We don't know when. Steve Campbell, 21st of January, 1962. No excuse not to send me a card now. 21st January, 1962. Do the maths for you. I'm 62. Dash. 20, I don't need anyone to shout any numbers. <laughs> this isn't meant to be a quiz. But it's a certainty it will happen. And I don't want to live for the dot. I want to live for the lie. All right, last point in seven seconds. <laughs> Giving. So how, how am I going to live? Here's one way to live for the lie. Giving is the only antidote to materialism. The world screams at us to own more, to buy more. You don't have enough. Live your life to make life easier. Then you get the more and you think, what's the point? That too wears out. As people, come on, let's be honest. I struggle with this. I have a possession obsession. And so do you. We have to fight it. We want the next thing. Many people who've accumulated great wealth have said it doesn't even bring them pleasure. There's one man who was the richest American in 1885. He took over his fortu father's fortune in 1877, and he doubled it from 100 million to 200 million by the time he died. W.H. Vanderbilt, and he said this, the care of $200 million is enough to kill anyone. There is no pleasure in it. Andrew Carnegie, who died in 1919, a Scottish, British, lived in the States, philanthropist, who wrote a book called The Gospel of Wealth, he said this, millionaires seldom smile. Henry Ford, founder of the Ford Motor Company, said this, I was happier when doing a mechanic's job. Of course, they're only saying what the Scriptures say. Ecclesiastes 5 verse 10, He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This is also vanity. Whoever loves wealth is never satisfied with his income. If we'd have had time, I was going to ask you to turn to one another and imagine this awful scenario. Your house is burning down, all the people have been rescued, so the people in your life are safe. They're outside. But if you had the opportunity to run back in for just one thing, what would it be? Discuss that over the dinner table. We discussed it the other day as a family. It was quite hard to do. Do you know what some of my, 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 wife, my wife said? The photos of the children when they were younger. I said, my guitar. I couldn't, I just couldn't. Think of what do we do with it? But just, just have that conversation. 
because your laptops, they're backed up. Everything's on there, can be saved. Remember to back up if you remember nothing else today. Remember that one. Your phones can be replaced, your credit cards. Thank God, the reason we said the people were outside is because what we value most is often the people. And here is the antidote to materialism. Give. This is what Apostle Paul said, and so I'm saying it to you. This is Paul. I'm talking to lots of rich people who are listening. Command those who are rich in this present world to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share. In this way, you will lay up treasure for yourselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may hold of the life that is truly life. And if you're listening to me and you think, well, I'm poor. Don't you for one minute think the poor can't be generous. You might be struggling so as you can't pay your bills, you can still be generous. You might be stable so you've got month's income that's coming in every month. And you, but if, you, if that month stopped, then you'd be in trouble. You can still be generous. You may have extra. You may have surplus. You can be generous. Generosity is about the heart. It's not about the bank balance. I want you to look at this from a number of poor people in India, and the difference they've made in the world. So don't you say, I can't, because every one of us can be generous in our time, our talents, and for sure, our treasure. Look at this, a handful of rice. There are many ways of serving the Lord. Some people do great things. Some people are good teachers. Some people contribute lots and lots of money. But when we talk about this handful of rice, it is very humble. The service is done in the corner of the kitchen that nobody sees. But God knows. God bless. Mufai Tam is a practice where each Mizo family puts aside a handful of rice every time they cook a meal and later gather it and offer to the church. The church in turn sells the rice and generates income to support its work. The handful of rice ministry started in Mizoram in 1910. This concept of Bufai Tam became so popular throughout Mizoram over the years that giving was not limited to some individuals. The whole of Mizoram, rich or poor, young or old, everybody contributed to it. It is something which my mother has taught all of us right from when we were very young. And I feel like Bufai Tam is a piece of Christian service that anyone can do it. People started to give more and in creative ways. Rice, vegetables, firewood and other produce. And also cash besides their regular tithes to the church. The churches in Mizoram are now self-sufficient. In 1914, the money received from the sale of handful of rice was rupees 80. Uh, that is uh, one and a half US dollar. In the year 2009 and 2010, we raised money, uh, one and a half million US dollar from handful of rice offering. We don't receive any outside funding. All the money we have, we receive, is raised within ourselves. Mizoram state is the most backward state in India and we are the poorest of the, of the poor but still we can raise funds for the ministry of the Lord. We can support 1800 mission workers and in the meantime we can also send overseas missionaries. There have been times when some churches have thought that we need to get blessings from God and the attitude has, to, has been, what can we get when we become part of the church? But here, the handful of rice offering inspires us that God has called us to share what we have with God for God's ministry. We Mizo people say, as long as we have something to eat every day, 
we have something to give to God every day. Generosity comes in many different guises. It's not exclusive to the rich. What's in your hand? What can you do? Now, yes, we have a vision offering next week. And we want you to be generous in giving to that. But it's not just that. My wife has had these rings which were given to her by, I think it was her mum, or maybe it was my mum, I don't know. She doesn't wear them. This, this one here, let me write, I read, wrote down what she says it is. It's a purple amethyst. We've never had it valued. And Ange said, next week, I just want to give something into the vision offering. We've, we've planned how much money we're giving. We've set it apart. We've been saving to give. We want to give something that I don't know the value of. It could be worth thousands. It could be worth 50 quid. I don't know. But she said, I want to give it because as I give, I don't want it to control me knowing how much it's worth so that I'll keep it. I just want to give it generously. You've all got something to give. Now, don't come next week with lots of clothes. Sell them on Vinted. All right, and then give us the money. <laughs> don't know what this one is. Little pearl as well. But don't give us the money. Give it to God. A.W. Tozer said this, Whatever is given to Christ is touched by immortality. What a great statement. Whatever is given to Christ is touched by immortality. What's that mean? treasure in heaven. I believe in what we're doing here at C3. Reaching more people for Jesus. I believe in the C3 impact work and all we do. I believe in GLS in the way we're seeking to help leaders get better to influence the world. I believe that our Christmas services are very important to try and reach people that wouldn't normally come to church. And I want to give into those with my time, treasure and talent. I want to give what's ever in my hand. What about you? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you've given to us. We are grateful. We remind ourselves we're stewards. We remind ourselves this world is not all there is. We want to live for the lie that which we feel even in our fingers right now. Help us live for the line of eternity. Because we know, we know you've paved a way through the cross, through your death, through your burial, through your resurrection. And we want to invest into people's lives now, yeah, but more so into eternity, Lord, we pray. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our friends online and in the other locations of God now. It's just you in the room. On your seat, you've got this, the treasure principle keys. And on the other side, my giving covenants. Now hear me right. That giving covenant is not for you to hand in. This is between you and God. We're just suggesting that maybe you sign that and God sees your commitments. We're not asking you to give that in anywhere. It's for you privately but also the treasure principles. And I'm going to finish the next one next week. God prospers me not to raise my standard of living, but to raise my standard of giving. And we'll talk some very practical things. But that's for you to take. Please, please don't leave them. These cost us money, and we don't like to waste money. So take it. Put it on your fridge if you like. Put it under your pillow. Put it wherever you like. But let's live for a bigger purpose than what we see. I'm going to ask us as we close for you to just close your eyes, bow your heads. Because I want to appeal to any of you that are in the room. If you've never given your life to Jesus, do it now. I actually believe that we'll all live for eternity. 
but it depends where you will live. There is a hell to be shunned and a heaven to be sought. And there is even reward that's in that heaven. Go back to week one. But I want to ask you, do you want to live for something bigger than the dot? Your life. And then live for Jesus. He gave his life for you. I'm going to pray a prayer that's a prayer of devotion to him. He hears your prayer. We're all going to pray it out loud as a church just to help those doing it for the first time or by way of recommitment. And at the end, if you prayed this for the first time, I'm just going to ask that you raise your hand and we would love to give you a precious gift, the Gospel of Luke, with some Bible reading aids that go around it to help you as a gift when you raise your hand at the end. So come on, church, let's pray this out loud. It's the first time God hears your voice. If you're recommitting, maybe you've gone away from God and you're coming back home. Come home today. Come to Jesus. We'd love you to say yes to him. Pray this with me. Lord Jesus, thank you for the amazing gift that you gave of your life. Thank you for your love. Right now, I give you my life. Forgive my past. Forgive my sin. I want a new start. I want to follow you. Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. Still with the heads bowed, eyes closed. Anyone in the room, just me and a couple of the team that are looking, would you raise your hand if you prayed that first time? Or as a recommitment, we just want to give you that gift. Celebrate with you. Anybody in the room? said yes today to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I've finished. We're going to sing a song that's a new song. I don't like to do new songs normally at the end, but it's new because we're going to be singing it tonight for the recording and these musicians have been prolific in their songwriting. If you're a guest, you didn't know any of the songs, we very rarely just sing all our own songs because there are great songs from all over the world, but there are some great songs that have been written here. And so tonight we want to record them. And I'll tell you why we want to record them. It's not to make money. It's not to make money. We don't want to get sucked into that celebrity kind of industry we want to use them for the glory of God to go around the earth. The people, some of those songs we sang today are beautiful. My heart was stirred, and we want many to be stirred with a noble theme about Jesus Christ and his Lordship. So it's a new song. At the end, there'll be a prayer team here. When we finish after this song, there'll be a prayer team here. Out in the marquee, there's free tea and coffee. If you've got enough money to be able to buy some of the posh stuff, then you can buy that at Coldham. Stick around, enjoy it, don't run away. You can go to our next step stand. If you're new to C3, you want to get to know more about us, we would love you to sign up for our email. Get involved if you want. Come on to our, some of our next steps classes. Let's stand together. Let's celebrate as we go. Let's learn this song. Come back tonight for this album recording and for worship. We're believing God for a great evening as we worship tonight. God bless you. See you next week. Bye-bye. As your praise fill the air, hope is here, light has come. Hey. Heaven rose with the praise, the heaven here face to face, endless freedom in this grave. Here we go!
Jesus, worthy of all praise. And all creation cries out, all my heart will sing out, Jesus, worthy of all praise. Come on, lift it up. Sing it up. Hello church, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Phil and I'm the church online pastor. I want you to know how much you are important and valuable to us because you've been called to be a son and daughter, to be adopted into the family of God. You are special because of that and we want to care for you. Do you know Jesus? Do you know what it means to follow after him? Maybe you said that prayer of commitment for the first time or as a recommitment. We would love to know to celebrate you, to send you a pack which includes a gospel. Make sure if you said that prayer that you fill in that form. We also want to care for you by praying for you. Never think that you're asking for prayer too much or that your prayer request is too big or too small. We are here to pray for you, to care for you. Fill in that form today. And I dare you, if you have requested prayer recently and you feel like, oh no, I can't request prayer again. You, I want you to fill in that form today. We want to connect you to community. We have platforms, Facebook group and our Discord server in which we talk and relate to each other. And we have events that happen through the month that you can come along to, get to be known by people, pray for people and study the Bible. One of them is the online group and one of them is follow that first. And I want to challenge you, if you've listened to this and thought, you know, I'm not going to be accepted or I don't feel worthy or I'm str I struggle to make friends, then push through that sense and connect with us because we are here to connect with you. Thank you so much for being here. You are valued, you are loved, and we will see you again another week. Bye-bye.